This is One on One. There he is, Roger DeRose, President and Chief Executive Officer of Kessler Foundation. Good to see you, Roger. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. For those uh, who do not know, the Kessler Foundation is? Well, you know, everyone that hears the name Kessler, they think of the great medical rehabilitation that sure. takes place. And it's taken care of Christopher Reeve and Eric Legrand and Ben Vereen. But few people know about Kessler Foundation and the leadership that we provide in research in terms of the work that we do in spinal cord injury and stroke and brain injury and multiple sclerosis. But the other part of our organization is the venture funding that comes from our organization to other nonprofit organizations that are creating businesses that hire people with disabilities. We're trying to do everything that we can that after we improve the functionality of a person with a disability to reintegrate them back into their community and with their family. You know, as I was getting ready for the show, I was stunned by some of the numbers. Tell me if these are off. People with disabilities, cognitive and physical. The unemployment rate, Roger, is it as high as 80%? It is. How it's, could that be? I know it's incredible to think that it's 10 times the national average that we're, we're talking about every day. We're talking about 55 million people right. of the population, all right? right? Right. How could the unemployment rate be so high and what is causing it? Well, it, it, really, it, it really comes down to fear in terms of employers that are not certain what it is to hire a person with a disability. They're not certain if it's gonna cost more money. They're not certain if it's gonna impact their insurance rates, if their accommodations are required. They're not sure how to deal with people with disabilities. And so their disability, because yeah. all of us have disabilities, their disability is fear. It's fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And those are all myths because once people with disabilities get into the workplace and have a significant role, uh, they are great contributors. They have great ad 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 adaptability. Um, uh, they have great attendance records. Uh, so they're, they're great contributors to the bottom line of an organization. They have great track records. They do. Are there companies out there, Roger, that actually have, sp speaking of track records, are there some companies that actually have done some real good work in this area, have ignored the myths, and actually hired some people with disabilities and have done well. Yeah, there are, and I'll give you two examples, Steve. One is Walgreens. Walgreens. Walgreens has done an outstanding job. They've moved the hiring of people with disabilities into their distribution centers. They tested it for about three years, and now they've moved it out to 20 of their distribution centers all across the United States to service the 7,500 retail stores that they have. They have 30 to 40 percent of their employees in their distribution centers with disabilities. They're 30 working to 40 percent. 30 to 40 percent, and they're working side by side with able bodied individuals for the same pay, and they're held accountable for the same performance metrics. Another organization that we helped to fund uh, to demonstrate to them that hiring people with disabilities could impact their bottom line was Lowe's and they went through the same. We test marketed with them in three different sites across the country, and now they are rolling it across all of their distribution centers here in the U.S. Yeah, as well. But hold on, Roger, when you, it's interesting. You said we, that the Kessler Foundation, what role do you wind up playing in a situation like that? Are you saying that there's a chance, we don't know what would have happened, that there's a chance they may not have done that? Did you encourage them to do it, and then helped initiate doing it, and do it, and then provided dollars to do it? Right, They're, they were skeptical in terms of using their dollars to fund a program like this. So what we ended up doing was funding a nonprofit organization that acted as the consulting group and engaged with the disability organizations that were bringing people with disabilities into the organization, recruiting them, training them for the assignment, and working with Lowe's uh, Human Resources to train their managers mm -hmm. how to, on how to work with people with disabilities so that they felt really engaged with them uh, side by side with mm -hmm. able-bodied employees. Kessler Foundation does so much more. Talk about some of the other initiatives you're most proud of. Well, you know, uh, here in the state of New Jersey, and we, we, we fund programs all over the United States now, but here in New Jersey, one program is the Hudson Community Enterprises. The this Hudson is, Community Enterprises. Right. And this is a program that is into document management. They, uh, they do document imaging, they do digital mail, they do document destruction. 
They started out five, six years ago, Steve, and they are now a $5 million organization with 400 employees. 70% of the employees are people with disabilities, all because of the funding that we provided to them to give them venture funding to get capital equipment, to put the infrastructure in place, to get started, to demonstrate that they could build a successful and a sustainable business model. And you're doing work with veterans. We are. We think that that's a very important aspect of our role in society, Steve, in terms of these are the same men and women that fought for us. They should not be the homeless people that defended our streets. And we believe that one of the, the great transition elements that they have to go through is once they take their military skills, how do they go back into the workforce, into the community? And so our focus has been on, on veterans with disabilities. We've done several uh, projects now that are having veterans work with veterans in terms of assessing their skill sets, helping them to make sure that they have the right education, and then trying to get them integrated into companies in terms of the hiring process so that they have a fair chance at becoming employed. What's the message for the rest of us, for employers out there who are listening to what you're saying right now, saying, hey, wow, I didn't know that. That's really terrific, I, but that's not enough. I, I think, Steve, uh, Steve, I think that it's, um, it's the next hiring frontier, hiring people with disabilities. We're going to have a shortage at some point. When this economy goes into full expansion mode again and the baby boomers have graduated, we're going to be into a shortage. And hiring people with disabilities makes good business sense in terms of their contributions, in terms of their creativity. Uh, they are consumers and they, they have a, a, a significant consumer purchasing power. And for organizations that hire people with disabilities, they also see increased market share as well. So they have a double bottom line. They get the profitability uh, and productivity enhancements, but they're also doing something that is socially responsible. You love your work. I do. Makes a difference. Yeah, it really does, Steve. We're making a difference in the community and across the country. Big difference. Um, we appreciate you being with us, and I assure you this will not be the last time we explore the subject. We barely scratched the surface, and like you said, it's a new frontier, not just for employers, but I have a feeling for those of us in, in the media and public broadcasting. Thank you very much, Roger. Thank you, Steve. Roger Duro is President and Chief Executive Officer, Kessler Foundation. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Steve. Stay with us. One on One will continue right after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Investors Bank, the Russell Berry Foundation, Fedway Associates, Inc., New Jersey State Nurses Association, PSE&G, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, auto insurance, homeowners insurance, and banking under the principle of stewardship. The law firm of Gibbons PC. And by St. Peter's University, the Jesuit University of New Jersey. Promotional support provided by The Star Ledger and NJ.com, Everything Jersey and by NJ Biz, all business, all New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.